I'm Dan Aykroyd. In addition to my work as a writer and actor, I have also pursued a lifelong interest in the supernatural and the paranormal. Time, space, and matter are continually being altered in ways that challenge our four-dimensional world. This is the realm of psi, events which defy conventional explanation. The following story is inspired by these subjects and is taken from the actual case files of the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research. Okay, let's find out. Like, split up? Yeah, like, split up. All right, Lindsay, you go that way. And Mia, you take the low road. I'll take the high road. And I'll get to Scotland before you. Stay in touch, everyone. So far, so good. Does that mean you found something? Negative. How about you, Pete? No, nothing yet. Claire's here. Where? Here. You're right there, Mia. I'm glad you finally made it. Originally, we suspected this was the remains of a child with genetic defects. Or a bioengineered mistake. Something the government was trying to hide. Exactly. Or it could be an alien. Yes. crap out of me. What's going on, Mia? Man, I had the weirdest dream. That's nice. And how long do you think you were asleep? I don't know. Well, I passed by here about 7.30, so... Can't be longer than 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm sorry, Peter. I'll check the tape and see what I missed. Yeah, and keep one eye on the live feed, right, while you're checking the playback? Look, I'm sorry about falling asleep. This isn't the first time this has happened. It won't happen again. I've heard that before, too.
What's with you and Peter? Nothing. Why can't you tell me the truth, Mia? Excuse me? I know you fell asleep. It happens. Yeah. To me. You know how Peter can be when it comes to protocol. Tell me about it. Don't let him get to you. And don't give him reason to. I was just coming off shift. It was a little after midnight and I was walking across a parking lot. And I hear this sound. Uh, coming from the building next door, the, the vacant one. I don't know why I thought I had to check it out. I mean, I'm not security. But it was a sound. I just felt I had to go there. Gerald Jones, age 43, a custodian in the building next door. Good performance so far. You think he's making it up? Watch this. There was a light, and like one big headlight. And then I, uh, I saw the alien. Can you describe what it looked like? Oh, it's about four feet tall and kind of weird looking out, like it was dead or something. What made you think it was an alien? Well, whatever it was, it, it talked to me. I mean, its mouth didn't move. I mean, it really didn't move, but it talked to me, like, like in my head. What did it say? <sighs> Stay away from the Thurston building or it would have to kill me. Did it tell you why? No. But it paralyzed me. I, I, I couldn't move. It did that to me. It did that to me, and, and I know it would kill me if I went back there. I know it would kill me. Two other workers from neighboring buildings claim to have seen a similar creature near the warehouse. Little telepathic men. What else you got in the Thurston's? They're a very odd bunch. Yeah, that much I know. Sightings began over a month ago, and they still won't let us in the building. Anton's running interference with the family's lawyers. Hopefully, we'll have full access by tomorrow. It's awfully suspicious, if you ask me. Yeah. Something feels really wrong. Wrong? In what way? Like I'm afraid. Like my life is in danger. Like I can't trust anyone. Is that in your dream or right now? That's the thing. I'm not sure. Tell me about your most recent dream. All right. I'm in a warehouse. Is that the Thurston warehouse? I think so. Lindsay, Peter, and Claire are there, too. There's this body on a table. A little body. Like a child. But it's some sort of alien creature. For a moment, I could see myself on the table as if I was the alien. Is that how you feel? Like an alien? Sometimes. What was your reaction to this alien? Horror first. Fear. Compassion. Towards the alien? Yes. Claire was about to perform an autopsy. I could see the scalpel, but I couldn't stop her. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I was sure it was still alive. Claire cut into the little body with the scalpel. How did you feel? Powerless, responsible. Like, how could we all be so cold and just cut it apart like that? What were we going to learn by killing it? And then the spray came out of the alien's body and it got Peter. It killed him. And I knew it was going to happen. Anton, hi. Peter, Lindsay. Is this a private conversation? No. 
I was just calling to say that uh, Thurston family lawyers have agreed to let us conduct our investigation inside the building. Oh, good. What made them change their mind? They needed more details, information on the organization. Mm-hmm. You think they're hiding something in there, Anton? I don't think so. But you never know. Well, since we finally got access to the building, maybe we should go check it out. Hmm? Find out. Stay in touch, everyone. is not responding. Mia, what's happening? Responding. Yeah. She went down this way. We should be able to track her with the thermographic scanner. If she's still in the building. What's that supposed to mean? Never mind. You getting anything? Nothing yet. All right, let's go. Get you out. Peter's coming back. Just stay calm. I don't know what happened. I was backing up, and then I got stuck. I just, I couldn't see. It could have happened to any one of us. But it didn't. Is that you, Pete? Here, Lindsay, put these on. Mia, we'll get you out of here. Don't worry. We'll get you out. We'll get you out of here. Take it easy. Hold still. That's it. That's it. Hold still. It's working. Hang in there. Uh. 
We're gonna get you out. Hold still. You'll be okay. Gonna be okay. There. Easy. Easy. Take it easy. Okay. That's it. All right, let's get you to the lab. So how long was she trapped? About half an hour. Well, how is she? Physically, she seems fine. I'll need samples of the substance. I bagged it for you. Hey, Mia, are you okay? A bit shaken up. I panicked. He didn't panic. He got caught. What do you think it is? It looked like it was spun. Some sort of web. I'll have the cryptozoology department do an assessment. Hell of a spider spin a web that size. Hell of a spider. What are you doing here? I have to get this back to HQ. Wait, I don't understand. Of course you don't, Mia. You're in too deep. How do I get out? You know how. Claire? Mia? What was Claire doing here? Claire wasn't here. She wasn't just in the bathroom. <laughs> no. Are you feeling okay? Mia? Are you all right? No, actually. I really don't feel like being alone right now. Sure. You can sleep here tonight if you want. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, what is it? I think I'm hallucinating. Maybe you are. You think so? Maybe what you're experiencing has something to do with that web. What do you mean? We still don't know what it was made of. So what do you got, Claire? Our initial analysis of the substance indicates that it has similar properties to liquid silk. Like a spider's web? Yes. That is what our cryptozoology team first anticipated, but it's not carbon-based. All life forms on Earth are carbon-based, aren't they? In theory. But this substance may not have originated on Earth. Have we been exposed to any hazardous contaminants, Claire? Extensive researching hasn't brought up any toxins, so to the best of our knowledge, the web doesn't pose a health risk. What about hallucinogenic properties? Not that I know of. Why? Just wondering. Why? I want to know what we're dealing with. So do I. Let's get back in there. Peter? You ready to go? It might be a better idea if Mia stayed in the lab, focused on the research. I thought you finished the research. Well, there are still details to follow up on. I don't think that she should go back in the warehouse. Stop baby. her. She may be more traumatized than we first thought. Being caught in that web really shook her up. It never would have happened 
if she'd been concentrating in the first place. Would you give her the same kind of consideration that we give other experiencers? She is an investigator. She should be able to handle it. Lindsay, look, we've all been through things that we'd rather not think about, right? But that does not excuse careless and inconsistent behavior. Cut her some slack this time. I have been cutting her slack for a long time. If she is not fully a member of this team, then she should take a leave of absence. You and I can handle this. We don't need Mia. Right, well then I'll recommend that she gets a leave of absence. Shut it this way. There's usually a weaver. The giant spider theory. Oh, no, let's find out. Lindsay! Peter! is it's the weaver looks like some sort of cocoon How'd you sleep? Like a baby. No headaches? Your eyes aren't burning? Sensitive? I'm fine. You look okay. Never felt better, really. Still, you should have a full examination. I think you're overreacting. Peter, we don't know what kind of bacteria, fungus, microorganisms were in that thing. We'll get the analysis back from HQ shortly. Wait, wait. You're not going to report this? We found a cocoon with a creature in it. That's what happened. No 
will be fine. But I'm dreaming things that then actually happen. Precognitive dreams are quite common. I have them myself. You do? Mm-hmm. Provides useful information, prepares you to deal with situations before they happen. So this is normal? Within the range of normal, yes. Especially when you've been inquiring into the meaning of your dreams the way you have been. I still have trouble making sense of what's happening. Takes training. Think of it as scuba diving. Scuba diving? Yes. You want to be where the coral reef is. That's where all the fish are. Memory. Right. And you must always know where you are in relation to the surface. It's like those drowning accidents where divers swim deeper instead of surfacing. Yes. They become mesmerized by the depths. So I just need to stay aware of which direction the sky is. Using that analogy, yes. Strange noises coming from his room. What kind of noises? I don't know, like a like a radio transmission signal. Where are you going? What time did Peter get here? I don't know. Was he carrying anything? I didn't see him. I just heard the noises, like I told you. All right. Come on. You hear that? Yes. That's the noise. surface of things, nothing appears as it is. And yet, everything that appears unreal is more real than the surface of things appears to be. We have another request, folks, and it's one of my favorites. It's going out to Susan and Cole Pines. Susan, honey, Robbie still loves you. Lindsay? Why do you think there's something wrong with Peter? It's not just about the sound, is it? When Peter and I found the cocoon, he touched it. He might have inhaled the spores. Why would you say that? 
Why would you say there were spores? I had a dream about it. A dream before it happened? Yeah. What is it? In the dream, Peter died. There. You will not stand in the way of our transmutation. Annihilation is our ultimate salvation. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean, transmutation, annihilation? You know too much. I don't know anything. I'm just a paranormal investigator doing my job. him don't you understand i killed peter and it felt great it was the adrenaline the fight or flight mechanism it's natural natural i blew him away you made the right decision you should pull me from this project i'm clearly out of control that won't be necessary your performance was exemplary how can you say that mia we were expecting something like this to happen at this stage in the process why the hell didn't you warn me you needed to find out for yourself. And I needed to know how you'd handle it. It's a lot like receiving acupuncture. Thank you for coming, Lindsay. What's going on, Anton? We've been testing and piloting this new technology for over a year. We've just never used it to its full capabilities until today. And why Mia? Hey, Anson. Good to see you, Peter. So what's this all about? I wanted you and Lindsay to participate in a project we've been working on. We've been conducting experiments to determine the impact of paranormal investigation on the investigator. And Mia has been the primary experiencer. You mean to tell me all the time you took her off the line of duty, she was here doing experiments? Yes. Mia has been in training developing the ability to move through various levels of her psyche at will. Why Mia? As a recent recruit, she was a prime candidate. She also has an innate ability for lucid dreaming. What's with all the secrecy, Anton? I wanted you both to be fully objective. Why? To verify Mia's memories. Yeah, what do you mean, verify her memories? That's what you'll be watching today. We have developed a new technology to access images in the inner eye. And we will be undertaking our first full trial today. 
All right, Mia. Now, I want you to drift back to the day that you first started your work at the OSIR. Picture in your mind what happened on that day. So what happens now? Watch. Now drift forward to your first assignment as case manager. You want me to take the lead on this one? Well, thanks for the assistance. Well, why don't I do backgrounds in preliminary interview? Yes, good. I remember that. You tapped directly into her cerebral cortex? Cerebral cortex, cerebellum, and hypothalamus. It's amazing. Now, Mia, drift even further forward to your investigation at the temple in Los Angeles. I am sister. This is way beyond our area of expertise. She's staying in contact with us. We should back her up and do the research. The barge is going to blow her up. If we don't barge in there, she will die. Are you coming? You said that? Word for word. Did when? It's a long story. <laughs> now, Mia, drift even further forward to your investigation of Thurston Warehouse. These should be even clearer. We've been working with these memories during her training. She was listening. Function is erratic. She's gone too deep. Anton, do something! It's under control. I'm going to count back up to ten. When I reach ten, you'll be fully awake, fully present in the moment. One, two, three. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She must be disoriented. Just plunging deeper. <laughs> Anton, stop the experiment! I'm going to take her back further in time. Yeah? Go back to a gentler time before you came to work for the OSIR. I want you to drift back, relax, drift back before your work here. Excuse me. Yes. I'm Mia Stone. Of course. Please sit down. Coffee? No, thanks. Well, congratulations, Mia. You passed your recruitment stage with flying colors. Really? I'm in? I'm assigning you to one of our best teams. In fact, it's my former team. In a sense, you'll be replacing me. This is amazing. Thank you. Welcome to the OSIR. I'd also like you to participate in a special project in addition to your field work, if you're willing. Special project? We're conducting a series of experiments determining the impact of paranormal investigation on the investigator. Will we be using new technologies, cortex taps, neural imaging? Nothing so invasive. We'll be working with your dreams and feelings using a more therapeutic approach. We'll explore your psyche with analysis, discussion, and hypnosis. Well. Sounds right up my alley. Sure. This is a classified project. You won't be able to discuss this with anyone else, not even the investigators you're working with. Can you keep a secret, Mia? My lips are sealed. Excellent. Paranormal research is defined by its attempts to prove the unthinkable, inquire into the unbelievable, and delve into life's deepest mysteries. Strange truths fascinate and often terrify us. But ask yourselves, if there are powerful forces at work beyond our current sphere of knowledge, are we ready to face such power? Or is it more comfortable just not knowing the truth? For Sci Factor, I'm Dan Aykroyd.